inspire us. The very word instills terror in the heart of anybody who played Necromunda back during its first edition. They were by far one of the more broken gangs introduced in the Outland supplement. Uh, but they have been absent from the new version of Necromunda for many, many years. Uh, anyone who's watched my Nick Davis interview knows that it is entirely Nick's fault that they were quite so broken in the earlier edition of the game. But now... They are back, and it's not a, a secret at all that they have returned into Hive Secundus in a new kind of insert into the Necromunda lore. There was a particularly cool article on the Games Workshop website yesterday, which I thought I would talk to you about briefly because of what I think it means going forward for Warhammer 40k. So here we go. Spiras. Okay, so for, for anyone who doesn't know, they were nobles originally from pretty much any family across the nobility of Necromunda who would don off-world combat rigs. Uh, essentially, suits of highly technological combat armor that in many respects often seemed more advanced than what the, the mainline troops of the Imperium got to use. And then in, you know, true noble fashion, because Necromunda is at the end of the day, like all of 40k, a parody of our real world, they would descend into the Underhive to hunt the poor for sport. Uh, this has now been changed and updated for the new version of Necromunda, in line with some of the changes that they've made to the lore, in particular all of the kind of Hel House Helmore succession storyline that we've had. We have now been told in the new kind of Warhammer community article, which I'm assuming will be covered in the kind of the, the Hive Secundus books and so forth that are coming out in the near future, that only House Helmore has access to these high-tech off-world combat rigs but also that uh, they are more commonly used now for hunting mouse strain gene stealers. So for hunting big prey, essentially, uh, rather than hunting the poor of the underhives of Necromunda. That's not to say that, you know, people on a stag weekend don't descend from House Helmore into the underhive and just decide to engage in some, you know, freelance murder willy-nilly, but the gang is now far more styled towards the approach of hunting deadlier prey. And it does feel like something almost kind of like from Alien vs. Predator, where there was that whole kind of hard prey versus soft prey. If anyone read the kind of the Dark Horse graphic novels or any of the uh, expanded universe novels, uh, there was a real kind of split in the Predator. Uh, I'm going to briefly digress here. A real split between those predators who wanted to hunt xenomorphs and those predators who wanted to hunt humans. Things that are inherently naturally deadly versus things that are deadly because of the ingenuity and the weapons that they have available to them. And I do wonder whether we might see some of that in the Necromunda background as the law advances. But what I want to talk to you about today is what they said yesterday in the uh, Spira kind of breakdown, the kind of the, the designer commentary, essentially. So, for anyone who doesn't know, the Spiras are intrinsically linked to the Tau. The Tau Codex, which I have loitering here, when it first came out, featured in the back a little lexicon of, of common Tau um, vocabulary, which I always thought was really cool. In particular, my favourite is that one of the words that features in there is ukos, which means spoon, because it's just, you know, in amongst all the random terms for warfare and so forth, is the word for spoon. But four other words that feature in the Tau lexicon are... Jakara, meaning mirror. Malkaor, meaning spider. Orus, meaning powerful. And Yeldi, literally meaning winged one. Yeah, funny that, the mirror shield wielding Jakara, the incredibly powerful Orus, the web slinging Malkador, and the uh, winged Yeld class Spira suits. It was heavily implied back when the Tower Codex released that the off-world combat rigs actually were being sold by the Tau. And the thing that always felt a little strange, I suppose, was how different the aesthetic to the Spira combat rigs were to Tau armor. Like, Tau armor is all about straight lines and blocky angles. It's very much Gundam style. The, um, Spiras, on the other hand, basically look like Spider-Man villains. Like, they all look as if they should be stood on the top of the Brooklyn Bridge, screaming the word Parker into the void. What they said in the 
Warhammer community designer commentary yesterday is that they particularly wanted these suits to look non-human. So to move away from the kind of the blocky utilitarian style approach of the Imperium. But equally, they said that they wanted them to look insectoid. And that is very true. I mean, these these new Spyro suits definitely have lots of kind of angles. They look very much more like kind of the micro... <laughs> Brian Michael Bendis era version of Ultimate Spider-Man villains than the older Stan Lee Spider-Man villains. What does this mean for 40k? Well, I still think that the Tau connection between Spyros and the Tau is there. I mean, the names are, are so much there. Unless they're going to just go, hey, we're just going to ditch that part of the canon. It is fairly common knowledge, I mean, it barely even counts as a rumour anymore, that the Vespid Stingwings are getting a new kit. Because part of Games Workshop's slow move to, to make everything plastic multi-part kits, they are releasing, we understand, a Vespid kit for Kill Team. Now, the Vespids have always been kind of just a bit of an interesting aspect of the Tau, introduced in the second Tau Codex, but their style is very much just, hey, we're bugs with a little bit of body armour and some Zap Blasters. What I am hoping this means is that perhaps the insectoid design of the Spira combat rigs might suggest that although the Tau are the brokers responsible for the sale of Spira combat rigs to House Helmore, that maybe the laboratories in which they are designed and manufactured come from Vespid. Does this mean that when we get the Vespid Stingwings, they're not going to be, oh, I'm a blocky bug with a gun. Are they instead going to be awesome, hideous, kind of biomech-suited warrior monsters with a variety of different weapons, you know, web blasters and, uh, you know, mirrored deflective ward saves, all of the stuff that we currently see the Spiras wielding, will we see elements of that in the Vespa Stingwings? I think yes! I think that is what they are hinting at and leading towards. And that's really cool, because it will give the Tau something that is very different to what they have now. And I suppose that's kind of what you're hoping for. I mean, in terms of the crew to give that kind of unarmored combat element to a Tau army. The Tau already have loads of zap, zap, zap guns. What they don't have is kind of weird, slightly high-tech combat monster-type bugs. And that's what I think the Vespid may well become. I think that may be what they are hinting at here. Which I think is really cool. Uh, of course, House Helmbor needs to be reported to the Inquisition for dealing with uh, the Xenos and handling Xenos tech. Not least because of the whole aspect of it would appear that humans have to be heavily kind of biomodified in order to fit into spire suits. And again, I wonder if this means that the Vespid that we see are going to look more like the proportions, the long, thin, limbed, almost like mantis-like proportions that we are seeing on the new Spyro combat rigs. Food for thought. Uh, okay, cool. Thank you very much for watching. As ever, I will catch you next time. Bye for now.